Hey there everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. I'm going to be using some products from Simon Says Stamps brand new Good Luck Charm Collection. And in addition to that, I'm also participating in the Good Luck Charm Release Blog Hop. So if you would like to not only see more inspiration using the new collection from Simon, but also have a chance to win some prizes and also obtain a free gift, be sure to head on over to my blog if you're not already there because I have the full details on the hop over there for you to check out. So in today's video, I'm going to be pairing some of the new products from the release to create a unique ink blended look using some layering stencils and also glitter paste. Now what I love most about this technique is the fact that I can customize these layering stencils to create a completely unique background and have a combination of ink blending and glitter paste mixed together to create some really cool designs. Now I'm using pink and corally orange colors today for my project, but bear in mind as you're watching me create this, you could swap out the colors for anything you prefer. So the stencil set that I'm going to be using today is called Interlocking Circles and it's a really cool geometric pattern. I'm going to start first by taking my stencil, the first layer of it, and taping it to my cardstock. This happens to be Simon Says Stamp 120 pound white cardstock. I really like this particular cardstock for ink blending with their Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks and that's what I'm going to be using today for the ink blending. I'm going to start first with a new color called Carnation. It's a really pretty pink and I'm going to work first by ink blending that color along one side of the stencil only. Blending it towards the second half of the cardstock but not going completely over. That's where I'm going to bring in my second color which is Peachy. And I'm going to start overlapping the two colors in the middle but focusing that peachy color along the other side of the cardstock. So when they meet together in the middle it's creating a really pretty coral. I'm going to finish up the stenciling on this layer, then remove the stencil to reveal the design. It's really pretty, but we're going to step it up even more. So next I'm going to pull in the square layer. This is going to nest in between those interlocking circles. Again, I'm keeping that tape in place to be able to hold the stencil so it doesn't shift while I'm working. We want to make sure that these are layered up very evenly. Now I'm going to reverse the colors. Instead of putting the peachy color where I had the peachy before, I'm now sticking it on the opposite side where the pink is. And then vice versa, I will take the carnation color we used and ink blend those squares over on the side where the peachy ink was created. So we're creating a reverse here and it looks really pretty when I pull this off. You can see how we've got that really neat mirrored effect going on. There are these little ovals that are going to nest inside of the interlocking circles. I still have that tape in place, so we're going to use that to hold the stencil down. This time I'm going to bring in some darker ink. So in the trio of ink colors that the carnation pink was from, there's another color called peony. I use that for the pink side, and then I'm using grapefruit, which is the darker version of peachy, on the peachy side. So again, we're working with that mirrored effect here. Now with a little bit of ink left over on my brushes, I'm going to carefully add just a little bit of shading on both sides of my panels, focusing the pink on the pink side and the orange on the other side. So we're getting that really pretty soft tone on tone effect. Finally, we're going to bring in that last layer, which are these little diamondy star shapes and these nest in between the interlocking circles. I'm going to use paste to add this final layer down and I'm using Simon Says Stamp Rainbow Glitz Glitter Gels to do this. With a palette knife, I'm going to carefully pick up some of the purple to start and I'm going to focus that purple on the side where the pink ink blending was focused on. Then I'm going to fade that out towards the middle and bring in the orange color. I'll make sure I clean my palette knife between the two colors. 
Now that orange color is going to get focused on the side where the orange ink blending was focused. But when we meet them in the middle, I'm going to start overlapping those two colors. And what that's doing is it's mixing them together as we apply the paste and it's going to create a new color in between, which looks absolutely amazing. When I peel this stencil off, you're gonna see how they meet up in the center here and transition between the two colors beautifully. So this panel has completely dried and I'm gonna pull out the nested domed arches die set from Simon's new release to cut this particular shape out. Then using the largest of those nested domes, I'm gonna cut that twice from white cardstock and on one of those shapes only, I'm going to score a line along the top of the domed arch so that way I can create a fold that will serve as my card base. So this is going to create a hinge so that my card can open and close. And we're gonna have this really great shaped card that was made very simple and easy by these shaped dies. So I'm going to attach the piece that did not have any score lines onto the piece that did. And so now you can see this card can open and close. So this is going to nest behind our cute patterned layer here. And I'll use some foam tape to attach that down. Off camera, I die cut the Linking Lucky die set from some colored cardstock and also white. I ink blended the centers of those die cut pieces with Simon Says Stamp inks and small blending brushes. That's going to give me a little bit of shading on those. And what I decided here was that I wanted the Linking Lucky die cut to actually be flowers instead of four leaf clovers. So this goes to show you that you can stretch the use of your dies beyond just the intended use. So this is not just a St. Patrick's Day kind of themed die. As you can see, they look adorable as flowers. Okay, so once I die cut my Linking Lucky die, my cutting plates are starting to get a little worn, so my die cutting wasn't super crisp. It had some fuzzy edges with some little hairs of paper around it. So I'm just taking this tool from Tim Holtz. I have it linked below in the video description and on my blog. And what it does is it brushes off all those little fibers and hairs of the paper. And so it makes my die cut super clean. And then I just brushed off that hair that was left behind on my little foam mat into my trash can. Okay, so on the center portions of this clover die, I'm going to put some craft tacky glue, but that glue is only on those center portions. The reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to pop the ends of the clovers up. So it made them cupped a little bit, they have some dimension, and that's going to help give my flower some dimension too. I'm adding little tiny foam dots on the back sides of each petal of my little four leaf clovers here, which are now flowers. Once I've attached all these little foam squares, I'll remove the release paper and then add just a quick dot of Simon's Craft Tacky Glue in the center. So what we're gonna do is when we put this down onto our cardstock, the Craft Tacky Glue is going to adhere the die cut flush to the cardstock, but then the foam squares are going to lift those petals up. So again, we're creating some dimension here and it's going to give these flowers a lifelike appearance and also give them some nice separation from the background. So I attached this background onto my card base using foam tape like I mentioned earlier. That's going to give some separation between the card base and the background panel. I wanted to embellish my flowers with some gems. So I have these really cute jewels from Doodlebug. I have a couple of different varieties here. And those look really great in the centers of these clovers to really make them look like flowers. These already have adhesive on them, so I'm just gonna press them really well into the cardstock to adhere them. To add a sentiment onto my card, I'm pulling out this Well Wishes stamp set from CZ Design. It's part of the new release, and I'm going to stamp it onto some slate gray cardstock. I wanted something dark that was going to stand out amongst these colors, but I didn't want to go completely black. So slate gray is a great in-between from having something like white or a color, but not going full black. So I really like this, and I used some embossing ink and white embossing powder to stamp and emboss the greeting. Once I heat set this, I'll take my fine tip scissors and fussy cut the sentiment out. If you don't want to fussy cut the sentiment, you could just trim this down into a little sentiment banner. 
To attach the greeting, I did use a couple pieces of foam tape behind that greeting so it's a little bit more dimensional than the flowers in the background. And to embellish the card a little bit further, I brought in some of the four leaf clover sequins from the Good Luck Charm collection. And I just put those around the flowers to kind of give you the idea of leaves to go with the flowers. I didn't want to add any additional die cuts because I liked this card being a little bit more on the simpler side. So by adding just those little green sequins, it gives you the idea of, of some greenery without actually having any greenery on the card. I absolutely loved how this turned out. From the shaped design to how the inks mix together with the paste, and then of course really stretching that four leaf clover die and turning them into flowers, that really made my day. So I'm really happy with how this card turned out. I hope you were inspired to use some of the ideas that I shared today to do some crafting of your own and maybe mix up some pastes and some inks together to create some really unique backgrounds. Layering stencils are a fun way to be able to combine these products and give your stenciling a completely new look. So thanks so much for tuning in today, friends. Again, if you want to participate in the blog hop, be sure to check out the link in the video description or if you're already on my blog, scroll down to the bottom of the post. I will be back very soon with more to share with you all, but until I see you again, I hope everyone has a very wonderful day. Bye!